citizens greetings and welcome to In Touch with Durham County. I'm Deborah Craig Ray, Assistant County Manager. I'm joined by my co-host, County Commission Chairman Michael Page. Hello, Deborah. As our regular viewers know, we use this TV show to interview our Durham County department heads, staff, and community partners to share important information about the many valuable programs and services. Durham Technical Community College provides education, continuing education, job training, and more to a variety of residents in Durham and Orange Counties. Carver Weaver, Director of Marketing and Communications, and Lisa Inman, Dean of Student Development and Support, join us to talk about some key changes taking place at Durham Tech and an ongoing program that's coming up very soon featuring Wes Moore, a national advocate for helping improve futures of young men of color. North Carolina is one of 17 states that maintains control and oversight of alcoholic beverages. Our state is a member of the National Alcohol Beverage Control Association. More than $868 million were generated statewide last fiscal year by retail and mixed beverage sales. Durham County ABC Board Chairman Waylon Burton and Barry Sessoms, ABC General Manager, are with us today to share an overview of our Durham County ABC operations. Chairman Page, let's begin our conversation. Let's begin. Welcome, Carver and Lisa, and we want to thank you for being with us here today. Carver, as Communication and Marketing Director, please share with our viewers a little history of Durham Technical Community College. We may have residents who are new to our community that would love to hear some more about your school. Of course, I'd be more than happy to. And Deborah and Commissioner Page, thank you very much. We appreciate this opportunity to talk to our community. Uh, Durham Tech is uh, about six, uh, 53 years old. We started in 1961 um, as a vocational college and uh, evolved over the years into a community college. We were one of 58 community colleges in the state of North Carolina. We serve Orange County as well as Durham. Um, and as you mentioned, we have curriculum programs. Those are for students who are seeking a four-year degree, so they come to the community college for their first two years, and then they would transfer to a traditional college or university. We have continuing education, which can be anything from lifelong learners interested in starting a new hobby or adding talents in uh, anything from motorcycle safety to cake decorating. Uh, but our continuing education programs also encompass a lot of vocational and certification programs, such as networking technologies, um, paralegal, um, dental technologies. Um, we also have basic skills, our Center for the Global Learner, um, English as a, second, as a second language, so we're serving a large Hispanic population. Basically, everybody in the community can gain something from attending Durham Tech. That's fantastic. Lisa, as Dean of Development and Student uh, Support, help us understand how your office worked to help students succeed. Sure. Um, actually, my department is made up for, of a number of different offices. So student development and support includes financial aid, admissions and enrollment services, counseling, student development and activities, student information and records, and we also have an Office of Student Services at our Orange County campus in, in Hillsborough. Um, and as you can imagine from the different offices that are part of my department, there is a, a great deal that we do providing direct service to students. So basically from the point of inquiry all the way through until that student graduates, they're dealing with someone in my department. Can you talk about some of the barriers to success uh, that you try to address in your office? Sure. I think there are a number of different um, barriers that we try to address on an ongoing basis. Um, one of the things that we're doing now is we are really taking a look at all of our processes that we have in my department. So are we making it difficult for students to even enter Durham Tech? Uh, starting in January, my department will actually be going through a service area review where we will have an opportunity to get feedback not only from our students but as well as our colleagues on campus and getting input from um, other external partners so we can get a, a better sense of how well we're doing or not doing in terms of supporting our students. Uh, right now even before we go through the service area review we're looking at um, 
how do we go about supporting our students and understanding that sometimes what makes sense to us doesn't always make sense to our students. So looking at things like information that we provide on our website. Is it clearly stated? Is it easy for students to understand? Uh, and it gives us an opportunity. Uh, we started a Connect Center, which is actually our version of a call center, but we call it a Connect Center. And it's completely staffed by work-study students. And that gives us a unique opportunity to hear from students who work for us um, to get that student perspective still so they can give us input on how difficult a process may be to navigate uh, or to also provide feedback that they're hearing from students when students call in to our campus or visit our campus. But it also ensures that when you call Durham Tech during business hours, you'll get a friendly voice and someone who's trying to help you get to the information you need or solve any problems you may be facing. Customer service is so Absolutely. important. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Well, Carver, you know, in um, November 2011, Durham Tech um, started receiving funds from a voter-approved quarter cent sales tax. Now, what's the program called, and can you tell me how those funds are being utilized by Durham Tech? Yes, that uh, those funds are called Connect funds, and we use them uh, primarily in five different ways. Um, the first way that we probably serve the largest number of students is for um, Durham High School graduates, uh, public, private, anyone who's, who's graduated from a Durham High School can get a scholarship of up to $2,000 for four semesters. So if they're enrolled for four continuous semesters, they can get $500 a semester simply by virtue of being a Durham resident, a Durham County resident, and having graduated within the past year from a Durham High School. The second way is through our work-study programs, and there are a number of the vocational programs that I mentioned, such as um, the paralegal and, let me see some of those other programs. So, but those are scholarships through our continuing education um, that we can grant. Uh, Lisa mentioned our work-study students. We have probably tripled the number of work-study students on our campus uh, because we can use Connect funds to compensate them. And not only can they work in our call center, but they can work in departments that might be consistent with their programs of studies. Um, if I could just interject, right now we have 96 students that are currently being supported through the Connect funds this year alone um, and have an opportunity to work in, in various offices around the campus. Um, the fourth way is our Gateway to College program, which is for people who have dropped out of high school in Durham County and, but wishing to uh, pursue their education further. So we can aid them with everything from child care, tuition and books and transportation. And then finally, um, the GED testing uh, increased very dramatically last year. It went from about $25 to $80. Mm -hmm. That can pose a hardship for our students. So the Connect funds allow us to offset the cost of GED testing. Wonderful, wonderful. Now again, um, I know the program has operated a couple of years and we made some changes um, just this summer uh, as I think we were going through the budget process. So it sort of contrasts uh, what's different. Okay, well, the, the Gateway to College funds for dropouts and the GED testing are two brand new aspects of the programs. Um, the work study has been in place, but as I said, we've expanded that program um, pretty dramatically. The scholarships for high school students replaced a bookstore study voucher. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a much larger uh, financial support for people who want to continue after graduating from high school. And I would say the other difference um, is actually the target population. So when we implemented the bookstore voucher during the 2013-14 academic year, we were looking at Durham County residents, mm -hmm. and we weren't specifically ta targeting recent graduates. And um, when we decided to implement the scholarship, it was very clear we are only looking at students who actually graduated in this year. Mm -hmm. So we're able to better support our recent graduates. Okay. I understand you have recently introduced a new logo and a branding campaign for the college. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, we're very excited about our new branding initiative and I've brought a few of our little goodies along to show you. Um, the uh, 
logo is, a, a, in addition to being a kind of a stylish D and a T, it, we also call our pathways logo because our students enter and exit the educational pathways at different phases in their lifestyle, different phases in their career. They may be a high school student. They may be someone who has uh, been displaced from a job but is seeking new and more relevant career skills to make them more competitive in today's global economy. Um, the green is uh, uh, brought over from our old logo and we incorporated the orange as a nod to our Orange County campus. That's great. Do, what do you think Durham, why do you think Durham Tech was ready for a new image? Uh, just look at what's going on in this community. Uh, we wanted to be a part of the Renaissance and the, the incredible um, rebirth of this community. As I mentioned, Durham Tech is more than 50 years old. Um, but we want people to know that we are training people with skills to make them competitive in today's global economies. And we're adding programs and we're innovating and adding technologies to make us do that. And we think that the new logo is has more vitality and more energy and kind of hitches our wagon to that star. Yeah, I would say so. Durham <laughs> Tech has long been known in the community for your work on uh, educational persistence and achievement, particularly with young people of color. And I hear you have an exciting speaker coming to town who has some important messages uh, for this audience. Could you explain that? Yes, I'm very pleased to announce that our Dr. Charles Sanders President's Lecture Series speaker for this fall will be a gentleman by the name of Wes Moore. He has written a book, a best-selling uh, novel called The Other Westmore, uh, which details the, the two young men who living in Baltimore, both raised by single parents. The author started having some trouble in high school and run-ins with the law, so his mother sent him to Valley Forge Military Academy. And he graduated from there with honors, went on to Johns Hopkins, became a Rhodes Scholar, and studied at Oxford. Um, he is a decorated Army veteran. He was a paratrooper in Afghanistan. Um, and he was a White House fellow with Condoleezza Rice. Uh, and on a visit home to Baltimore, he had people telling him, you're wanted by the law. And he said, well, that can't be. Well, he found out that this other young man, Wes Moore, similar circumstances, similar upbringing, had been involved in a robbery that went south on them, and a police officer was killed. So he is now serving a... a life sentence without a uh, chance of parole in a Baltimore prison. And so Westmore, the author, reached out to the other young man and they forged this relationship. And the result is this really beautiful novel about the choices that you make and the, the situations that you find yourself in and how to find resources um, to help you get out of those situations and, and the friends and acquaintances and all those choices um, and how they affect two very different destinies. So uh, he'll be coming, um, he'll be speaking at the college on December 3rd, but that afternoon at 3.30 at Hillside High School Auditorium, he will be speaking to the general public and that event is free and open to anyone who wants to attend. Fantastic. I believe that we have come to some final, any final thoughts that you want to share with us today? Lisa? I would just like to say that we are so excited um, and appreciative that the residents of Durham County uh, have shown so much support for our college in so many different ways. And we are looking forward to continuing that partnership and the opportunity to continue giving back to this community. Right, we appreciate that. Well, we'd like to thank you both for being here. Um, is there a way we can get more information, website, phone numbers? Absolutely, our website's very easy. It's durhamtech.edu. Um, or you can call the college at 536-7200, uh, and just that'll connect you to our Connect Center, and one of the students will be happy to direct you to the department or the person with whom you'd like to speak. Fantastic. Well, we know that you have um, done some new video marketing work, and uh, we're going to go to a commercial break right now, but we're going to let our viewers actually see uh, one of the videos that you have produced that sort of sheds a little light on the history of this wonderful university. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. And when we come back after our break, we will talk about Durham County ABC Board. Stay with us. Durham doesn't stand still. Neither does Durham Tech. For more than 50 years, Durham Tech has been an essential part of our region's growth, training residents for new kinds of jobs, opening up new opportunities, 
providing new pathways for success in work and in life. And as the 21st century continues to gather momentum, both Durham and Durham Tech are pushing the pace. Local entrepreneurs have spurred a business resurgence. Artists of all stripes have contributed to a cultural renaissance. Things are happening in Durham that aren't happening anywhere else because we, the people of Durham and Orange Counties, have taken it upon ourselves to make them happen. And we, the people of Durham Tech, are right in the middle of it. Our faculty members are creating new programs. Our administration is investing in new infrastructure and technology. Most important, our students are inventing new futures and in the process, helping to reshape and reinvent our entire community. We can be proud of what we've accomplished in the past half century, but right now, we're looking ahead. And we're even more excited about all the new possibilities on the horizon. Durham Tech, let's do great things.